Welcome, everybody. Today's February 9th, and this is the Chaos To Do Metrics Working Group meeting. So it's great to have you all here. Um, uh, the minutes are in the chat. We are recording, so please feel free to turn your camera on, turn your camera off. Doesn't matter. It's all good. And I'm going to share my screen. And um, today, today we're going to have, we have Sean and Igor, I don't know if uh, Lewis is going to join as well, but somebody associated with Grimoire Lab is going to talk about software. Uh, I'm, Lewis is finally not coming, it's just me. Okay, so it, it'll be you. Okay, so today, the main, I, main topic for today is to talk about a couple of the pieces of chaos software uh, that can help in OSPOs. Because um, I think the last few weeks we've been talking about metrics and metrics models, and we, I just want to kind of you know close the loop on on the resources that are available in the Chaos Project for folks. Um, just real quickly before we get there, um, we did have ChaosCon last week at FOSDEM. It was great. It was a really great success. We probably had about forty five people there in the morning. Um, we do have some notes that I will end up sharing with this group. So. We had kind of two sessions that we were working on. One was uh, how are metrics helpful for your OSPO or for your community? So we had kind of breakout groups answer that question. And then we had a follow-up question, which was um, what are things that chaos should be working on, for, you know, really to address those, those needs identified first. So um, like how can chaos help essentially? So Georg Link um, took notes while we were running those sessions. He just shared those notes with me this morning. And I'll work with him to consolidate those and share them here. So that was ChaosCon. In the afternoon, too, we had a couple breakout sessions or a couple uh, different sessions with Augur, one of the pieces of software we'll talk about today, and Grimoire Lab, another piece of software we'll talk about today. So I thought it was it would be nice just to kind of continue that conversation here with this group. Um, just so you all know, too, I had a chance to connect with Don Foster, who I think many of you know from VMware. And so Don uh, is gonna gonna start leading this OSPO chaos to do working group, uh, metrics working group in the future. She was at that conference that I was talking about just a few minutes ago. And I think she's kind of traveling and just kind of catching up with stuff. So she can't be here today, but starting in two weeks, she's gonna be leading that. So Don, if you watch the recording, thank you for agreeing to do that. And you're awesome. All right. And then also um, we had a chance at, um, at ChaosCon to have a session in the right after ChaosCon, like at lunch, uh, to talk about OSPO++. And for those of you that don't know, OSPO++ is an effort uh, for starting and uh, running open source program offices inside of academe and government in, in that space. And I had a chance to talk with Claire Dillon there, and it sounds like we're going to um, be starting up a a OSPO++ working group, which would be different from this working group. So it would be kind of metrics, metrics models that are focused on helping uh, OSPOs in universities and in uh, government sector. So it'll be like people that are kind of in that space uh, talking about things that are important to them. The reason that I bring this up is because in our um, goals that we had worked on maybe about a month ago, one of them was about measuring metrics and metrics models for academic impact. I think there's a big enough community around OSPO++ to have that conversation a little separate from OSPOs, which are kind of here in, in, um, in, in more corporate settings, which is completely great. Um, nonetheless, the talk today, um, the talk today on software is certainly applicable for both. Um, I, I, did, a, oh, yeah, sorry, Matt, I have a question about that. Um, do you know who's leading that? Do we know somebody that yeah, is so, it? Yep. So I had asked that to Claire, <laughs> who is going to lead it. And uh, Saeed from Carnegie Mellon has agreed to, to, to lead that effort. So pretty happy about that. And Saeed has been a longtime participant in OSPO++. Um, so he'd, he'd be great. Will that, will that happen through chaos then or through... Yes. Okay, yep. so that person will need all the like login. Yep, exactly. Administration. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. So we can, yep. So we'll just continue to use chaos resources to to do that. 
Um, and then we can have that conversation with a dedicated group of folks, which I think will be a, a nice, try not to split this time here, you know, some corporate, some some government academe. Um, so I'll, I'll loop you in on that. Cool. Stephanie, I did see your hand go up briefly. I don't know if that was. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Okay, cool. Right on. Um, I am asking because I know that you have an interest in OSPO plus plus. So yeah, you were just I mean, he wasn't. Yeah, I was actually asking, gonna say, I was assuming it was Saeed or someone like that too. So yeah, somebody who's really familiar with OSPO plus plus and would be a perfect person to kind of help coordinate those conversations. And I think Saeed would do great in that regard. Um, I did want to just point out real quickly to just a couple things from our last meeting, um, the starter project health metric model that Don had put forward um, is now in a PR. There are a few comments on there on the PR. So if you feel like going over and taking a look and adding to the conversation, that would be great. Um, it does also include, there was a conversation from last week about how the metrics models could um, be thought of not just at a single repository, but how the metrics models could be considered against a collection of repositories. Um, and so that that has made it into this metrics model. And I think that conversation is something that we're going to talk about in metrics models in general, because I think there are times when you might want to think about um, about metrics models with the, the health of repositories that are perhaps more software oriented versus the health of repositories that are perhaps more community or governance oriented and how we understand those could be, could be different. So, good. That was this comment down here, Justin, it was actually a comment from you <laughs> that, we've, so, that we've incorporated. Sorry, Matt, another question. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so as far as like posting that on the website and publishing it, uh, just wait on that for a little bit until folks have a chance to really chime in. Yep, and I think Dawn has to maybe take a look at some of the comments there. I don't think she's seen some of the most recent comments. Okay, perfect. Against that, against that PR. All right, great. All right, um, so with, with that, I just wanted to give you some 10 minutes there of kind of what's going on um, with prior stuff and how we've actually, how we continue to move forward even from just two weeks ago. So with that, I am going to turn it over to uh, not not Luis, but uh, Igor, who is going to talk a little bit about um, Grimoire Lab and Grimoire Lab being one of the pieces of software in the Chaos Project, Augur being the other. And so, uh, Luis, I have you as co-host. I don't know if you'd like to share your screen at all. And so the hope here is that just I have a few questions here. You know, how how has this particular piece of software helped OSPOs in their decision making process? Uh, what questions are you able to answer uh, with respect to the software and and what questions are you not able to answer and if you hit those questions that i put in here great if not that's also okay so okay uh, so first of all let me share in my screen and see if i can show you something. should be a co-host so you should be okay to do that mm -hmm. oh. so i guess it would be this one okay Yep, I see the. So, yep, those are my notes, uh, and uh, if we we can even at a certain point, if you have questions or you want to see any of what I'm telling, uh, we have here the. And the you can also, we're gonna, we'll keep it to about fifteen minutes, just so Sean has a chance to go to. I'll watch time for you. Yeah. So, if you want to see something of what I may tell, uh, that this is what I'm basically what I'm what I'm going to tell. So. Uh, First of all, it's obviously 100% uh, free software, uh, released under GPL. Uh, Grimoire Lab is in itself a platform or was thought uh, and designed as a platform or a toolkit. So it's a, uh, then it then comprehends a, a set of repositories uh, and each of the repositories is a different tool and all of, the, all of these tools work together uh, to, prov um, to provide a, uh, a common user experience of a full application. Then uh, the most outstanding, possibly the most outstanding uh, feature is the, the powerful possibilities to drill down uh, the data and uh, the capability of uh, managing identities. That's uh, for Grimoire, so the basics. Uh, then there's a specific fork of it that's still free open source software and uh, it's 
It has a slightly different uh, use case. It's not meant to, to analyze uh, specific projects or not a specific set of, of uh, uh, repositories, but rather it's meant to, to be uh, for massive usage. So it have a lot of different users and every user should have their own, their own interest. And it, it is uh, free software as well. And it is, uh, there's a, a service, an online service available that's not only free as in free beer, but also free as in, so not only free as in free speech, but also free as in free beer as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was 40 uh, because we wanted to, to provide this service. So so we focus on that on that use case. Um, the, yeah, well, Coldron is, uh, is, is a little bit limited. I mean, it, it uh, Grimoire Lahab has or handles about, I think it's 30 plus uh, different data sources. Uh, for Coldron, it is very, we have narrowed the, the choices to GitHub, GitLab, uh, Git, and, uh, and a few. I think it's, that's all. And if there's, there might be some other one, but uh, not too much. Uh, it doesn't provide entities management and uh, you cannot customize your, your dashboards. So that's the, Let's say the offering of, of tools uh, around Grimoire Lab. Uh, and then uh, for the open source program offices, uh, well, there's, there's a number of tools out there that uh, provide metrics for that can be useful on, in OSPOS. From those, only a few of them are free software. We are basically debating all of them. So it's Ogre and Grimoire Lab and the different variants of them. And uh, I think there's another one, but uh, yeah, there's a, a reduced choice. The rest of them are, are private uh, software. And uh, so for the use, for the OSPO use cases, uh, the kind of questions that uh, these tools can answer uh, is, are, I've grouped them in, in the three main topics that an uh, OSPO is focuses. So, uh, Either using, so the just was focused either on on using free software, on contributing to free software, or on releasing free software. In broad, uh, so in a very, it's a very gross approach. Uh, so for the first uh, one, for for the usage of free software, the question so is usually to assess. Uh, so what free software is safe to use in my organization. So it has to do with uh, a lot of, uh, so with dependencies and so on. And, and there, and we go, we uh, approach it, this question from the community side. So uh, what you can have is a number of metrics and, and models and, and calculations uh, specific for for communities, so we can here you can distinguish which contributors are active and which not. Uh, you we have the what we call the onion model, which means uh, we identify in, in the people who the so the, the the frequent contributors we separate them from the uh, normal contributors, and then we we separate also the casual ones, and that uh, this onion model is uh, is provided by by the tool, and then we have some. Some ways to be to some visualizations to visualize and see how how spread is the are, are the the top contributors and, and how much work they do, and uh, we have that that in two flavors. We can do that for individuals and we can do that also for organizations, and all this information uh, is useful or very useful to to assess uh, if the community behind the project. Uh, is healthy so that you can rely on on that software and invest on it, uh, knowing that the, the community will will be there for, for a long time. Then, for the participation in in free software uh, projects that are either inside or usually, this is meant for for participation in in, in projects outside the, the organization. The the question should usually is to to assess the risk of being either ghosted or, or dismissed. I mean, uh, doing the effort of trying to contribute and then uh, having problems with, with that. So the, the tool provides for that information around uh, the attention and response times uh, that you get when you do contributions. 
and uh, you can also calculate the, the rate of success uh, and you can then drill down and see and ask these questions for for uh, specific groups so you can distinguish uh, those organizations that are a part of the of the core of the so so that the organizations that are the owners of the of the repository versus the ones that are not or uh, you can even narrow it down to to the to your own contributions and see if your contributions are how do, do they compare with either one or, or the other so basically you can you can cut and drill down and, and ask these questions for different groups of of participants then uh, the third level for a open source program office would be to to have uh, influence on 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 repositories on pro, on free and open source projects it could be either their own i mean they publish their own uh, uh projects and they are they want to maintain the and keep the leadership or they want to gain leader uh, influence in in someone else's project so for that uh we can assess for instance the impact of our project so that basically evaluate the, the popularity uh, we can assess the evolution of the work focus so to see where was the trend where, where are the people contributing to which kind of topics or which kind of part of the of the code and uh, we can also ask uh, for actionable so for metrics that uh, that uh, make it easy for the for the open source program office to decide what they are going to do next so actionable uh, metrics and uh, what do we have there uh, from Gimor Labs so uh, yeah what we have is if in the impact we can assess the, the impact by showing the, the repository stars and forks and things like that uh, for the evolution of the focus we can uh, create things like uh, repository heat maps where, where we can for a, we can uh, see which parts of the code which um, uh, files are being modified uh, more than others and and how much more uh, in a visual way and then we can drill down to the to the data as well and uh, we can also uh, ask ourselves which kind of topics are being uh, more controversial or are calling the attention of the of the community and uh, for that we can either go visualize that uh, as a topic cloud so a typical word cloud uh, that has uh, some words uh, popping up bigger than, than others depending on how much they are mentioned and we can also rank and do some rankings and possibly but for instance I don't know uh, check uh, rank the, the the pull request by the number of, uh, of comments they have or so the fourth and back and uh, we can then rank them and see and put them the ones who are on top are the ones who are who need more discussion and the and what the ones who are at the bottom of the ranking are, are straightforward um and therefore community for, for uh actionable things um so we we can again yeah see the the one the metrics that as that i mentioned before uh around community health and, and usage of free software are useful then for identifying community leaders we can either pass on the on the onion model and uh, select or drill down uh, for the for the core contributors uh, we can also do rankings and, and find out who's more active either in, in issues or pull requests or commits or you name it and uh, we can also identify newcomers the same way and uh, we can uh, also uh, yeah, the controversies again happens again it's also actionable and we can also identify stakeholders so by looking at who's collaborating uh, and if we drill down and, and say and want to know who's collaborating on a specific part of the project or whatever uh, we can find out who's collaborating not, on, not only at the individual level but also at organizational level and that's it thanks Igor um I have you're still sharing your screen by the way I do have a question if you I just don't want you to show anything that you don't want to show that's, that's like a, all. <laughs> I took the 
<laughs> it's okay for the this this okay. screen it doesn't have okay. anything. Um, so are the what you were talking about? Can you go back to your list? I can back to back to my list. The list that you were just showing. Oh. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that one. So for the if you go down to the use cases, so like usage, participation, or influence, do you is it possible in Grimoire Lab to simply deploy these? Like how, how what's the challenge in deploying these or what's the the ease in deploying these? So somebody installs Grimoire Lab, right? And they're like, mm -hmm. cool. I would love to understand the, uh, the top one, right? And so I, I know that um, y'all have created panels for Grimoire mm -hmm. Lab. Are these available as panels? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, they the, the panels, uh, uh, they, they gather together visualizations that are connected mm -hmm. Uh, and are useful for a certain purpose, so that you can uh, bring up a specific panel, and then you yep. have the visualizations that are uh, revolve around that that topic. Um, so easy to deploy. Uh, well, it depends on your case, but uh, we have a lot of standard dashboards, uh, and uh, you can, if one of them suits your needs, you just pull it. Uh, okay. If you need to tweak it, you can then tweak it, starting from the from the standard one, mm -hmm. or you can start from scratch. So the possibilities are there. Uh, we are moving into this direction because the, the previously we we had another way to organize things. So the standard way to do in the past was we had three blocks of panels, which in turn have a several visualizations each and we have community we have activity we have at, um, product, uh, productivity or uh, performance and we had then uh, uh, panels for uh, specific for each of the of the data sources so uh, that's a, a different classification and we are now moving into a more use case. Uh, it's not really use case. But yeah. Anyway, we, we are moving into into we are exploring different ways to to approach this from from the use case perspective. So it could be uh, starting with a with the basic metrics that everyone can understand, and then go into the more complex ones, or uh, breaking like this, uh, breaking the the so you see taking for instance the, the, the use case of a, of, an, of an OSPO and then breaking it down into there the, these three levels and then going trading down uh, this is on the on the works so what we have is the classical the classical classification uh, that I mentioned before so community you know, uh, performance and activity and the uh, different uh, data sources okay so I did just put, do you see in the chat, Igor? I did just put the, I think the proper link to the existing panels with the SIGLs, the Grimoire Lab SIGLs, is that right? Uh, yes, SIGLs is the is the project where we store the, the standard panels. Okay, so I think as we wrap up here, does anybody have a question? I just like to, that, that link there takes you to the set of panels, so. We were kind of talking about here, which are kind of the predefined sets that I think Igor was talking about. Does anybody have any other questions before we turn it over to Sean? You have one minute. <laughs> All right, Igor, thank you very much. I very much appreciate it for giving that overview and kind of how Grimoire Lab is is. Kind of helping ospos um sean goggins you wanna yeah i do oh thanks elizabeth oh yeah that's <laughs> that's also good too all right so what i want to talk about is auger and a new project uh, at oss aspen slash eight not on github auger is a tool that effectively collects data in a format that is really focused on data scientists. So we give you 
verified data we you know whatever the pull requests issues comments on issues comments and reviews on pull requests commits whatever data you can imagine you would be interested in about open source um, we have that and it's in a relational format that is useful for data scientists because there's a lot less carpentry that they have to perform when we used Augur, though, or when we use Augur, we find that the actual volume of data that people have and the number of metrics that are available becomes overwhelming. So that's what led to our partnership with the OSS Aspen 8 Knot project. Um, and that project is a dynamic dash plotly front end for Augur data that can be easily modified using tools that data scientists are already familiar with. So if I want to look at newcomers, Augur is going to gather the data for a large set of ecosystems. And OSS Aspen can have a page that focuses on newcomer contributions. Alternately, we could have a page focused on dependencies where all the dependency data that Augur gathers could be displayed in a coherent way using that dash plotly front end. So relational data, dash plotly front end. Why don't I show you dash plotly front end? So can you see this now? Yep. Do you see my screen? Okay. So this is the eight knot project right here. And I've selected Kubernetes and I can do the whole Kubernetes organization here, or I can pick a specific repo within it. And chaos is what, what's called the chaos page is really about contributions, contributors, your newcomer pipeline. It gives you an analysis of drive by computer contributors per quarter, first time contributors per quarter, and then contributor types over time, whether they're repeat or drive by. And you can focus in and select so it's much more dynamic. So from a, who are the end users that can use this, uh, you're really reaching into folks who are in leadership positions and don't want to munch data themselves. This becomes kind of a dashboard that can be useful um, for those folks. You know, it says open source program offices. Um, there's also this overview, which is real similar, I think, to the metrics that Dawn outlined in the in her starter starter metric thing. So here we just have issues over time, which is loading commits over time on the whole Kubernetes ecosystem. It's taking a second. Um, you can look at new contributors by month. You can look at uh, issue activity and staleness, pull request activity and staleness, pull requests over time. You can see the trends. You can look at it over a longer period of time. You can move the window. You can zoom in. And one of the things, and there's a home page that gives you just the very, very high level overview of commit, issue, and pull request data for a particular collection of repositories, as in, which is what we're looking at in this case. And now we're going to very soon start providing a hosted version of Augur that lets you click this and sign up. I don't have it firing on my system today. But when you get here, you create an account in Augur. If you want to create a new repo group, you can add that. And then if I want to add a new organization, And I can add that organization to my demo group. And it doesn't matter if that organization, I don't know, something must have gone wrong there. Because I don't think it worked. Okay, didn't work. Demo failed. But the idea is whether or not data has already been collected for that repo, you'll be able to add it and then be notified when the data is populated for it. So it's intended to be just an endless you know, give you the endless ability to access basic OSPO data and also provide tools that make it easy for your own data scientists um, to work with. I'll shut up now and take questions. So, Sh Sean, how have you, have, has this made it into OSPOs? I know that Augur is, is used to help kind of yep. drive so decisions. This is, yeah, this is being... Uh, Red Hat is going to use this in their OSPO um, by the end of this quarter. So all of the testing that we're doing is 
really just focused on that uh, end of quarter launch date for for the first Osbo to be using this. Okay. Um, and we've made everything easy enough to install at this point that we think it's, you know, for Osbo's that don't want to use a hosted solution, they could use, um, they could just download and run these containers themselves. Okay, so the distribution is through containers. Mm -hmm. Yep. We think that's the easiest way. You can yeah. install it in some other way. Um, okay, D, is there, I'm sorry, I'm asking questions. I'll stop for a second and see if other no, people have questions. Well, I'm just going to make sure other people have some questions or see if other people have. Um, are you, so right now, these look like pretty individual level metrics. You know what I mean? Like commits. Are you, is there a, aim to bring some of those together like through metrics models yeah i mean so this commits dashboard is designed to let you see just the overall activity by by area and then these issues and commits these are really it's very similar to the ways that the metrics models are presented on the page and other tools Okay. You, you have the issues over time, the commits over time, new contributors by month, contributor growth. So these seven metrics would be potentially some kind of introductory or starter metrics model. Okay. Um, that gives you sort of the high level. And because you can, you know, you can pick a repo group, you can have multiple repo groups in your search. Um, you can constrain, uh, you can constrain with the login which which groups you see um, in the tool so you can create a, a persistent list of your groups of repositories that you look at together and come back to them every time you want to check okay um emma had a question is there a specific goal or plan that red hat is experimenting with on this so red hat's probably done a lot of the kinds of things that ospos do but um they have a lot of scale so their their fingers are deeper in some open source projects in their case they have tens of thousands of repositories that different people within the organization want to make sense of and the whole idea is that you'd be able to create um, fairly quickly with a data science team uh, a pretty useful set of dashboards uh, that are based on you know their the data gets pulled from Otter, if that's the question I don't know, I drifted there. <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess I was just more Matt. wondering specifically if there's like specific metrics, if there's like a hypothesis around like what dashboards would, like what kind of behaviors their dashboards might influence in their engineering teams or anything like that? I think, I think that's the one thing that we haven't looked at in the chaos project is how engineering teams specifically consume these dashboards. We do know that these, these metrics, looking at the issues and commits over time and identifying contributor growth and new contributors, these are metrics that are part of the starter collection that most people use when they come to chaos. And looking at issue activity and staleness or pull request activity, these are, these are kinds of signals. Maybe if we added responsiveness, so how responsive a project is, this would be um, pretty similar to um, the metric model that Don's put together. And you can, because it's a data science tool, it, creating a new uh, dashboard is relatively trivial for, because a lot of folks use Dash and Plotly. So did that answer your question, Emma, or nice what I was, <laughs> what I was, what I, I was I hearing? Oh, go ahead, Emma. Oh, I just think I think so. It did answer it. I think so. Thank okay. you. So maybe I'll I'll follow up on Emma's question though. Um, Sean, like, is there are there specific things that Red Hat that you know from your conversation that they're trying to solve that this will help solve? This this helps solve the I have so much data and I just need an overview and I need to pick and choose the repo is based on a particular question that I'm asking about my community on a particular day, or perhaps questions that I'm going to answer routinely. And it, I think it's the enabling of the user to be able to group repos however they want to and persist those groups and come back to them from time to time. That that's the, 
that's the use case for this okay. and which metrics are used is really um you know we start we're starting with the basic context for a project but like one of the use cases red hat's really interested in is our dependencies and so there's all the dependency data um and the ossf scorecard data in augur so we'll probably i'm sure we'll build a panel for that shortly okay and who do you know who the sorry to ask so many questions but like who the, who the kind of the viewers of this data are intended to be is it community managers at red hat is it everybody from the c-suite to community managers okay okay so all well i mean i, I think i think the question is is it interesting to developers or not that's that's something that we're not designing for developer okay. um, use, but that's not, it, there's no restriction on that. It's just uh, the design is focused on the questions that community managers, OSPOs, and projects might ask, as well as what companies engaged in open source might ask with regards to looking at their licensing or dependency risk exposure. Gotcha. gotcha. All right, cool. Um, other questions for Sean? I had one more question. So did you, you had mentioned kind of early that this may be a, a software as a service solution. Is that right or no? Yeah, we're going to make it available um, in that in that context, uh, except we won't charge for the service. We'll just create a pilot and let people play around with it. Okay. Um, we're shooting for that release date. Um, I'm just reading the list text. <clears throat> Two questions in the chat. Um, we collect dependency data by scanning the imports on the files themselves for a dozen different languages. We also use um, the dependency chains and the dependency scorecard and the OSSF scorecard. And uh, the third thing that we do is we look at dependencies from a set of package managers. So. You know, not every language on the world, but the big ones like Go and Rust and Python and Node, Java, C. Um, I, no, I don't think so. Actually, <laughs> we don't. We don't. We have a scanner for C, but we don't have um, the full dependency analysis because there's we don't have the package man manager analysis because those package managers vary. Okay. Yeah, good questions. Okay, so you did kind of your anticipated release date. I'm just kind of curious for the end of the yeah, end of the first quarter. Um, on the, so on the, I think I think we'll be out before the end of the first quarter, but that's the official target date. Okay. Cool. All right, right on. Um, so questions, Igor. I'm guessing you're still on. Any kind of follow up questions for Igor or Sean? Just wanted to kind of provide over these couple meetings we had just to kind of kick off this group kind of uh, an overview of the resources that are available in chaos. So I think you get it now it's metrics, metrics, like collections of metrics, and then software to ultimately deploy those. Um, the one thing that we haven't really talked about, um, Sean or Igor, are there, are there times where you've spoken with OSPOs where there's a hope to collect some information or answer some questions that your tools are just not able? To, to do? Like, is there a scope that you kind of, limitation that you see at all? Either is fine, either of you answering is fine. I know that it has happened. I mean, I know that it, uh, sometimes we we weren't able to provide the exact metric that they requested us, but uh, for this moment, I, I don't remember exactly okay. which was it. Cool. I mean, I think, I think the things that, have been added to Augur in the last year are they've emerged from answers, questions we couldn't answer previously. So all the dependency work is, you know, the last 12, 18 months, and that's because we couldn't answer that question. Okay. Um, same with license scanning. We we built that five, six years ago because we couldn't. That was a question that came up pretty early in the chaos life cycle. And I think yeah. dependencies as a risk have uh, become more visible more recently. Okay. Right on. 
Um, and then just for people to know too, just the the kind of the fourth thing we do and the fourth thing we do also in the CATS project is um, we have initiatives as well that help um, highlight metrics that aren't necessarily observable through trace data. So an example is our DEI event badging program. So it's just, it's a program that that asks for event review or event organizers to submit requests for badges for their, for their events. And we have people, human reviewers that take a look at these metrics um, to see if they're being deployed or how they're being deployed. So just so to kind of come full circle. So those are the things that we do in chaos. I, that's about it for me. Um, all right, so again, we'll meet. I think we're, we're kind of done. We'll meet again in, in two weeks. Don will be here to lead us <laughs> of all the career advice. Yes, exactly. If there's one thing that you take away, it's how to be a, <laughs> a better employee, maybe, <laughs> yeah. from, from this meeting. I think the, the one that I would continue to echo is just say no to everything yeah. <laughs> and then work up from there. <laughs> <laughs> the recordings will be shared on the chaos channel for the ASPO working group. Yeah, so we'll be done. Get, yeah, go ahead. We'll posted in Slack and I think he perhaps even tweeted. Yeah, and I'll I'll start. I don't think I had put these last recordings, Alyssa, in the to do group channel. You know, I'd only put them in the chaos channel. So I'll make sure to get them over to the to do group channel as well. I know y'all don't track every channel in the world for for, for every project. So all right, great. Um, thanks, Igor, and thanks, Sean, and thanks, yeah. everybody. It's really Thank good to see well. you all, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Take care. Bye.